Good evening and welcome to Have I Got News For You. I'm Julian Clary. In the news this week, the BBC is in trouble again over suspicions that some scenes in David Attenborough's series The Life of Tigers may have been faked. <laughs> There's evidence of more corruption in Moscow as riot police realise their new helmets have been bought from a watermelon dealer. <laughs> and on a walkabout in London, Ken and Boris are quick to react as Brian Paddock falls down a manhole. <laughs> On Ian Hislop's team tonight is an Irish comedian, an actor, who once appeared in an ITV children's pantomime, or to give it its proper title, the ITV News. <laughs> Please welcome Ed Byrne. <clears throat> And with Paul Merton tonight is the host of BBC Two's Daily Politics, which was this year named the second worst daytime TV show of all time. <laughs> Beaten only by the Jeremy Kyle show. <laughs> you must be very proud. <laughs> Please welcome Andrew Neil. <laughs> we start with a look at the biggest stories of the week. Ian and Ed, have a look at this. This is me getting paid for doing tonight's show. <laughs> that's what's left over after Ian gets his cut. <laughs> uh, that's our Prime Minister. Um, wondering why everyone's in a mess. Whose fault is it? Some idiot? Oh, it's me. <laughs> um, there's an inspiring figure. Oh, look. That's very clever. <laughs> the pea's fallen off. It's the end. <laughs> yes. This is about what everyone's calling the U-turn over the 10p tax, because he's apparently said, we'll take it off, but we'll give it back in other ways. Yes. Which they've said is a U-turn. I never understand why politicians aren't allowed to change their minds without everyone yelling U-turn at them. <laughs> the politicians go, let's do this, and everyone goes, no, that's a terrible idea, and go, oh, we won't. Ah, you U-turning bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Have the courage of your convictions and stick with that really unpopular idea that we all hate. <laughs> now, Gordon Brown is the first socialist prime minister who's taken money from the poor and then lent it to the rich. <laughs> 50 billion of your money given to a load of bankers. Unbelievable. A, a load of what? Bankers. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Just checking. What I like about all the money that's going to the banks, though, is this whole credit crunch thing. The good side of it is that it does make those ads where bank managers dance around look twice as much like arseholes as they already are. <laughs> yeah, there, is, there is a kind of a sense that when you watch those ads, you can go get off the surfboard and get back behind the counter. <laughs> this is not a time for frivolity. <laughs> but it was a gimmick anyway. He had a budget in which he said, I'm going to cut the basic rate of tax, and I'm going to do this by abolishing the 10p rate. And this contract lasted about five minutes. And then everyone said, but that won't work, will it? And because Gordon is supposed to be such a genius with figures, Everyone forgot about it for a year, and then he became Prime Minister and said, which idiot came up with this idea? <laughs> you know, like, you've got Frank Field, who's leading this backbench revolt, and he's like, oh, well, there's five million losers, and I'm like, they're, they're already low paid, I have to call them losers. <laughs> you've been an MP for 30 years, you're still on the backbench, who's the loser? <laughs> have we noticed food prices going up at all? Yeah, dreadful. Packet of custard creams now, outrageous. <laughs> Would you like to play a game yeah. called, um... <laughs> called Pop to the Shops. Pop to the Shops? Yes. yes. I like no. the title already. Pop to the Shops, Pop to the Shops, Pop to the Shops. Well, it's blank, to... blank, isn't it? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Are we thing, actually yeah? doing this now? We're yeah. going to do it now. It's just a bit of fun. Right. So here's the first question. Okay. okay. Is this supermarket sweep for idiots? <laughs> supermarket sweep for idiots? <laughs> <laughs> Who do you think it's aimed for at the moment? <laughs> Professors of history. <laughs> I popped to the shops at Tesco. Oh, is, have we started? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> okay, yeah. yeah. How much do I pay for a thick white sliced? Rock? Thick white sliced what? Oh, uh, yeah, that's true. A loaf. Okay. 85p. 65p. But last year it used to be 54p. Yeah, I know. I remember crying myself to sleep. <laughs> Is this the same program, or are we now doing a different program? No, no, <laughs> I wouldn't question it. We're going somewhere really exciting. <laughs> Away from politics, we're popping down the shops. Oh. <laughs> Excellent. Excellent, yeah. This Excellent. is real issues for real people, Andrew. Yeah. It's not the Westminster Club. This is politics in the raw, with Julian Clary. <laughs> 
Should we have called this all over the shops? Yeah. <laughs> I popped is this to the, the shops? working title? <laughs> You've popped to the shops, okay? Yes. I popped to the shops this time at Sainsbury's. Oh, really? <laughs> How much do Why I pay? Why are you going to Tesco's? <laughs> Did you not like the bread last time? <laughs> I popped to the shops at Sainsbury's. How much do I pay for a cucumber portion? You mean one slice? <laughs> I suppose it's half you a cucumber. You must be very poor if you're buying cucumber <laughs> by the um, slice. You might just want one slice of cucumber because you've just got one dodgy eye. <laughs> but you see how everybody's perked up now we're talking about shopping? <laughs> Is the answer five pounds? Forty pence. It used to be 39p. Are we it's... still popping to the shops? Yeah. <laughs> I popped to the shops at Asda. Yeah, oh yes. Asda. How much for 170 grams of Bernard Matthews wafer thin turkey ham? Is it 10p? It's 98p, but it used to be one pound and seven. So turkey prices have gone down. Bernard likes to buck the trend. <laughs> <laughs> Simply by getting ham from a turkey. <laughs> 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 well, call think... the old fashioned. <laughs> I'd bear my pig ham. <laughs> <laughs> we'll leave the pop to the shops game yeah. there, shall we? For now. Is it coming back next week? <laughs> Our former Prime Minister has been posing for a portrait. Did anybody see this? Yes, he's, he's been painted and uh, he looks very tired. Would and you like to see up. a bit more of the picture? Yeah. Yes, the art critics have all said that. <laughs> <laughs> the critics have said his head's too big. <laughs> which one doesn't have to be an art critic to have spotted. <laughs> <laughs> what other prominent figure has revealed his own long-standing health issues this week? Oh, it must be John Prescott, presumably, mm -hmm. talking about being bulimic. Because everyone's saying it's, it's very bad taste to bring up the fact that... <laughs> <laughs> Prescott, no, and there's this sort of general feel in the media, well, it's very brave of him, very brave of John to reveal it now, just as his memoirs are coming out. <laughs> <laughs> and they're jolly boring. <laughs> and the only thing we want to read about in them is is the affair with the secretary, which he's not going to talk about. So he's going to distract our attention by talking about stuffing something else. So, um... <laughs> <laughs> he could have mentioned it while he was in office. It probably could have helped for political capital, at least a bit of sympathy, or at least sort of say, well, I had to get a second jag I'd thrown up in the first one. You know. <laughs> he said, oh, isn't it good of Pauline to stand by me? <laughs> so, my wife got me through it, did she? Mm. Well, you showed your gratitude then. <laughs> Well, I don't want to come over as callous. <laughs> Too late. <laughs> Do Edith Piaf instead. <laughs> no. <laughs> what is the other crisis the government are trying to avert? I know the BBC's jolly worried about balance because the mayoral election's coming up. Vote Boris. Um, <laughs> I'm sure you don't have to remind him. He will. <laughs> <laughs> Again. You've got you to remind have... him who to vote for. <laughs> you now have to do a list of the 12 other candidates. <laughs> so you could vote for Ken or Brian Paddock or one of the others. <laughs> have you seen the latest debate between the candidates on YouTube? I hope it's balanced. He's had it, he wants it, and so does he. Tonight, the three leading contenders to be Mayor of London battle it out <laughs> in live debate. I'm very happy to say that I've run extremely effectively a uh, private sector organisation, unlike either of the gentlemen on my right, and indeed I think I'm the only candidate at this election who's had any experience of holding down costs and, in and, the private and sector. You, and, and I think you boasted on the Today programme that you used to manage 20 people. Uh, it's actually it's a few more than that. And uh, at least 50 people we had on the spectrum. We, we had a time, very proud to say, that we increased our circulation, we increased our profits. I'm not surprised, and, given the stories that came out. Right. Because no one else in the world has there been a 5% shift from cars to public transport. We're carrying 50% more people on the buses. <laughs> Great. Not sure about the casting, though. <laughs> this is the Labour rebellion over Gordon Brown's decision to remove the 10p tax rate. There were signs that Gordon Brown could be about to crack as he said, back me or sack me. Ah, oh, the old back sack and crack treatment. <laughs> <laughs>
The Daily Express warned its readers that their shopping What's bills... What's this with advertising the Express? <laughs> it's not funny or clever. No, it's the Daily Express. <laughs> You haven't got any marks yet on your side. No, no. You've got two. <laughs> <laughs> can, I, can I just point out we haven't had a question yet? <laughs> the Daily Express warned its readers that their shopping bills could be going up by £15 a week. Though there is one easy way to save 40p a day. <laughs> <laughs> Paul and Andrew, take a look at this. Oh, OK. Senator Obama, yes, showing he's one of the people, and oh, oh <laughs> uh, it's Hillary, of course, pretending she drinks beer. Watch this. Oh, I'm not drinking the beer. I'm going to ask somebody something else over here, and I'm going to go. Oh no! <laughs> <laughs> so there she is, pretending to drink something else. Uh, there's John McCain, the man who was uh, hypnotised by the Vietnamese, and when he becomes president, will be like the Manchurian Candidate, and he'll kill somebody important. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't I don't know. I just made it up. <laughs> So, like, like, like a lot of stuff I know. <laughs> there was the um, primary in Pennsylvania where uh, Hillary won by 10 points. And it just keeps the whole thing going on and on. And the Senator McCain, he's the one who's you know, grinning like a gorilla yeah. because he's the Republican. He's already been chosen yeah. effectively. He's got a chip in his brain. Uh, he just exactly. sits around, <laughs> and waits till he gets the job, then he but starts shooting. Surely him. what this is. <laughs> they're all desperately trying to look down to earth and of the people and all that. That's why they're doing things like bowling and drinking right. in bars and all that. Ba Obama got slagged off because he, he scored really badly. He, got, he just kept rolling them all into the gutter. But I can't help thinking that his advisors all said to him that the image of a big black ball knocking down all those white pins wasn't really <laughs> what was going to go over very well in the American heart <laughs> He's playing safe. Especially because most of them have red necks as well. <laughs> <laughs> What dirty tricks has Clinton been accused of? Uh, this is Mrs. Clinton, is it? Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> is it about the, the website where when Obama comes up, they put a picture of Osama? Yes. <laughs> so by subtly changing one letter, they suggest he's a towel head who's going to kill them. Yes. <laughs> She's been accused of trying to link Obama with Osama in voters' minds and with some success. Pastor Roger Bird, a Pentecostal minister in South Carolina, posted a sign outside his church reading, Obama, Osama, hmm, are they brothers? <laughs> <laughs> no, Reverend, they're not. <laughs> she also misspoke recently. Can yeah, I, just, I can't understand this, this concept that you can misspeak when she said, oh, I went to Serbia and all these people were firing at me at the airport and I had to duck under a hail of bullets and then she said, oh, uh, no, I misspoke. So she has no control over the words that come out of her mouth. <laughs> She can, she can talk about something that never happened and believe it happened. Would you like to see that little yes, clip? Yes, can we see the clip? So yes. We should put gunfire over it. <laughs> a visit supposedly under fire. A plucky first lady setting foot in the killing fields of Bosnia. I remember landing under sniper fire. There was no greeting ceremony. And we basically were told to run to our cars. Now that is what happened. Thank you. <laughs> It's one of these things where politicians, they lie about stuff and you think, well, surely, did it not occur to you that somebody would look this up? She claims that she's named Hillary after Sir Edmund Hillary, you know, first white person to climb Mount Everest and stuff, but she was, she was born three years before he climbed the mountain. Mm. <laughs> that only shows how far-seeing she yeah, is. Yeah, she was, yeah. <laughs> They're going to name you after a New Zealand mountaineer that nobody's ever heard of, but in three years' time, you're going to be the most popular kid in the playground. <laughs> They run around in the garden while we take pot shots at you. Bang! <laughs> How did Bill Clinton help with the damage limitation exercise that followed Hillary's misspeaking? Uh, he didn't have sex with somebody working for him. <laughs> That's more misspoking, isn't it? Oh, yeah. <laughs> According to The Guardian, he yeah. defended his wife by saying 60 year olds are apt to confusion when they're tired. <laughs> Can be helpful? Uh, meanwhile, what has George Bush been doing rather badly this week? Running America? <laughs> <laughs> Dancing in New Orleans. Mm. Let's have a look. to 
New Orleans to say, I'm sorry I didn't help at the time when the hurricane hit, but I'm yeah. dancing now. <laughs> <laughs> it's the hard-fought race to decide which Democrat will eventually lose to John McCain. <laughs> Here's Hillary celebrating her latest victory in Pennsylvania. Do feel free to click on to hillaryclinton.com, a website that's on husband Bill's list of favourites, below a few dozen others he visits rather more often. <laughs> Every last detail of each carefully stage-managed campaign has been thought through, even the choice of the campaign music. Hillary comes <coughs> on stage to this. Obama's chosen theme is this. And this is the tune for the Republican candidate, John McCain. Last week, Gordon Brown met Hillary in Washington and bought her a special gift, a luxury sponge bag tastefully embroidered with the words Virgin Atlantic. <laughs> <laughs> Polls show that middle America's ideal candidate is a hardline conservative who believes in guns and religion, is pro-family and anti-gay. Well, here's your man. <laughs> So, to round two, the picture spin quiz. Fingers on your buzzers, please. That's the old BBC logo. There's a new one, one now. now. <laughs> yes. It's... Some people are worried it might cause epileptic fits. Would you like to see what all the fuss is about? Yes, 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 Here um, are the old news titles. And here are the new ones. <laughs> That's uh, half a million pounds of licensed peers' money. Well spent, I would say. <laughs> the head of the BBC's multimedia news operation, Peter Horrocks, explained what had inspired the new logo. He asked the audience what key things they associated with BBC News. The characteristics that emerged included the phrase <laughs> BBC News. Who else had a McMakeover recently? Who else had a, a McMakeover? <laughs> McDonald's. Mm. <laughs> Was the clue in the McMuck? <laughs> Bruce Oldfield designed them a new uniform. Did he? Right. Yes. <laughs> Gosh, do they work in McDonald's? <laughs> Are those uniforms magnetic? <laughs> Is that the only drawback? Well, don't be silly. <laughs> <laughs> Would you like some more rebranding news? No. <laughs> yes, I'd love to hear more rebranding. Who or what has spent £100,000 on a makeover? I have. <laughs> Get your money back. <laughs> Oldham? Oldham's having £100,000 spent on it. It's now to be known as Newham. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> Would you like to see the Oldham logo? <laughs> it looks like one of those things in chip shops that kills flies. <laughs> <laughs> it could be the aerial view of a polo mint drowning. There was another successful launch this week. The Office for Government Commerce. Here it is. It looks fine until you rotate it 90 degrees. <laughs> and then it becomes a metaphor for most government activity. <laughs> also this week, McDonald's has had a makeover. The new uniform allows staff to wear a special tie or neck scarf available in shades of grey. Spots are optional or compulsory if you're working on the deep fat fry. <laughs> <laughs> One McDonald's employee was unimpressed with the new shirt and tie look, saying, it looks like you should be serving people in a bank, not burgers. Though, ironically, many of his colleagues serving burgers were recently working in a bank. <laughs> <laughs> Fingers on your buzzers for the next excitement. This is uh, Prince William in his flight suit. What has he been doing? He's been flying around in a helicopter. They said it's not fair that he's been flying to places like, you know, he's going to see his missus and going to the stag do's and all this kind of thing. But I say he's going to be king one day. If it was me, I'd be like, what does the R stand for in RAF? Exactly. I'll do what I like. <laughs> That's a Chinook. 
that could be flying to Iraq or Afghanistan, mm. but it isn't. It's going to a stag do on the bloody Isle of Wight. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to pick up Roddy Rickardson Smythe <laughs> and uh, <laughs> then drop it on Emma's house. Bloody funny, buzz her dad. <laughs> Then we'll all get completely smashed and someone mm. else can drive the bloody thing home. <laughs> <laughs> How much does a Chinook cost these days? 8.5 million each one. Are we, is this pop to the shops again? <laughs> <laughs> 10 million. Is that all? Judging by that shot there, that's only about two foot long anyway. Yeah. <laughs> the RAF claimed this was a routine training exercise, but the Sun interviewed an RAF crewman. He said if the Middletons had been tooled up with AK-47s to resist the landing, it might have had a training value. <laughs> <laughs> now, let's talk about the stag do. Oh, yeah. Things are hotting up yeah, now. Yeah, absolutely. According to the Sun, William yeah. was spotted on a bender in a pub in Cowes oh, on the first. Like, whoa, 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 whoa! <laughs> <laughs> oh, we're Wine. back on, on territory Julian's more familiar <laughs> with. <laughs> he was spotted on a bender. Yeah. <laughs> what had happened to him? <laughs> what did his pals give him? A <laughs> uh, Chinese bird. A killer wedgie. A killer? I say it rips out your liver. I, mean, what the... I didn't know this either. Apparently, it's where you pulled someone's trousers up very yeah. roughly. Oh, you're not used to pulling anybody's trousers up then. <laughs> <laughs> I know an interesting thing about the Royals. Did you know that if you steal the post, you can be done for, uh, for treason? Because it's the Royal Mail. Did you know that? No. It's very unlikely yeah. you'll get any post, though, to steal. Yeah. <laughs> but apparently, because from the time you post something to the time it reaches its destination, it's technically property of the Queen. Which means if you were to post a block of hash, you could do the Queen for possession. <laughs> She'd have to go to prison under her own pleasure. <laughs> Which happens a lot in Holloway, apparently. <laughs> the, um... <laughs> you've been interested in the royal blackmail trial? Oh, yes, I read something about that. The recordings of the royal employee at the centre of the case are being played to the court. All the people involved are referred to only by letters. Oh. Um, let's have a look at the kind of things that he's been saying. Okay. A is a lovely person. I love A dearly. A has been nothing but lovely to me. Always, always, always. That's the Queen. <laughs> well, that's Andrew, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, is it? Yeah. Oh, it's, it's a simple code then. <laughs> <laughs> MI5's still working on it. <laughs> but when asked what he thought of G, he said, I hate the man. Who do I hate the most? First of all, G, then I hate Q, then I hate H, Harry. then I hate M, then I hate N. And then he was asked about H. He said, I don't like him, I don't like him, I don't like him, I don't like him. I don't like him, I don't like him, I don't like him, I don't like him. I don't like him, I don't like him, I don't like him. End of story. <laughs> This is Prince William's difficult week, where he's been justly criticised for using an RAF helicopter to visit friends and family when it should be used for killing people. <laughs> According to the News of the World, William landed in the helicopter to impress his girlfriend. I would have thought being fabulously wealthy and second in line to the throne might be enough, but then I don't know much about girls. <laughs> Prince William has been criticised for landing his helicopter on the Isle of Wight, whereas his brother Harry has been fighting in the mountains of Afghanistan, lawless, desolate and trapped in the Dark Ages. <laughs> the Isle of Wight is just a short ferry ride. From <laughs> Fingers on buzzers. <laughs> this guy is mayor of somewhere or other. The reason he's in the news is because he had to resign his position because he's been on benefits uh, illegally. He's, he, he's, got, he's on disability benefits, but they've got photographs of him refereeing a football match. He's the benefit cheat mayor, Keith McNeef. Benefit cheat mayor. I knew there was a short way of putting that whole thing. <laughs> the former mayor of Pembroke has admitted claiming £9,000 in disability benefits to which he was not entitled. Um, does anyone know what the Lord Mayor of Belfast, Jim Rogers, has been up to? Has he dressed as a giant turnip and wandered around the street saying, vote for me? Well... That was no. boring. <laughs> <laughs> Dr right? Dressing up as a vegetable is involved.
Well, I'll tell you, whilst launching the Garden Gourmet Food Festival, yeah. he decided to try to leapfrog over a lady who was dressed as a giant tomato. Shall we have a look? Yes, please. He's, <laughs> he's looking very confident. Yeah. And we thought the troubles were over in Belfast. <laughs> <laughs> She's looking confident. Yeah. Here we go. <laughs> oh, dear. She was off work for several weeks, leaving the people of Belfast with absolutely no one dressed as a giant tomato. <laughs> to one spectator told the son, It looks pretty painful. She was on the floor for at least five minutes. People were asking her, Are you OK? And she was saying, No. <laughs> and what did Jim have to say afterwards? He said, I'm always ready for a challenge, but I didn't get the lift off I needed to clear the tomato. <laughs> Time now for the odd one out round. Ian and Ed, your four are Hillary Clinton, Bear Grylls, Elvis, and Tom Constan. Elvis recently turned out has been to London, according to a friend of Tommy Steele's. Mm. So it's fact. Uh, <laughs> he was we... told never to mention it. Uh, there was an we... oath of silence between Elvis and Tommy mm. Steele. Yeah. That's because it never happened. <laughs> And Hillary Clinton said that she was on a sniper fire when she wasn't. But Bear Grylls pretends to sleep outdoors when actually he goes to a hotel. Can we have a clue about the guy in the corner? Yeah, Thomas Comstock. He's a travel writer. Yeah. Oh, there you go. And he wrote probably the definitive travel guide of Colombia. Yeah. But he never went there. No. Oh. So Elvis Presley is the odd one out because all the others have lied about where they are, but he never lied about where he was, but Tommy still lied about it because it never happened. He never, Presley never went to London. Tommy still made it up. <laughs> yeah, they have all misled people about trips abroad, yeah. apart from Elvis Presley, yeah. although it emerged this week that he'd secretly visited England in 1958. No, that wasn't true. It was made up. How do you know he did? Because Elvis Presley in 1958 was one of the most famous people in the world. He landed briefly at a Scottish airport to fly on to America from West Germany. If he'd travelled from, from Scotland to London and had driven round in a car with Tommy Still in London, then gone back to Scotland, everybody would have known about it. Yes, but Tommy Still this week told the Mail, yeah. I swore never to divulge public what took place yeah, and well, I regret it's found some way of getting into the light. Because it never happened. I can only hope he can forgive me. No Who? one's told him he's dead. No. <laughs> <laughs> um, See, if Elvis Presley had come to London we would have known about it when he'd done it. Well he could have worn a moustache and a, a hat. <laughs> no, that would throw off the world's press wouldn't it? <laughs> I think it's Hercule Poirot has come to London. <laughs> Sitting around this awful hotel, that's what all this, isn't it? Well, it's Hercule Poirot, hello. I like all your thoughts. <laughs> I think things can be done. That was uncanny. Yeah. <laughs> Let's move on to Bear Grylls. He misled viewers about his trips abroad during his TV series Born Survivor. Instead of sleeping out at night in the rough in the middle of wild animals, he stayed in a, a hotel. <laughs> He's not even a real bear. <laughs> <laughs> They've all lied about trips abroad except Elvis Presley, who came secretly to England. He didn't. No, he, he didn't. didn't. <laughs> <laughs> no, he didn't. He's never You're been so to England. You're so sure. Why don't you want him to have come to England? Well, no, I'd love him to come to England. I'd love him to come to London. Princess Diana used to go to the pictures and things. She was a very famous yeah, woman. Yeah, Donald Duck used to go for a swim. It's got nothing to do with Elvis Presley going to London. <laughs> I'm not denying that other people have gone to London. It's a big place. You see dozens of people walking around if you stand there long enough. <laughs> dozens of them. But not Elvis. <laughs> not Elvis. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. <laughs> and they're singing. I'm looking for Mr. Tommy Steele. I left him around here in 1958. Yeah, he does. Yeah, it's a load of old nonsense. <laughs> Little white ball. You know, it's a load of old nonsense. We have no reason to believe Tommy Steele lied about this. <laughs> He went round London, he met the Queen. <laughs> the Queen said, tell me, do you actually have a wooden heart? <laughs> <laughs> I have a wooden heart, ma'am. The kidneys made out of plastic. You know, Tommy Steele is currently playing Dr. Doolittle in Woking, so now it's his turn to die in a toilet. <laughs> <laughs> Bear Grylls is in trouble for misleading viewers about the dangers and hardships he'd faced on his TV series, claiming to be in a remote forest, Grills was in fact staying at a well-appointed hunting lodge, so despite what people say, Bear didn't actually shit in the woods. <laughs> <laughs> Describing his perilous programme making, Grills recently told an interviewer, balancing risk and family is a real struggle, if I'm honest. 
But he's not, so it isn't. <laughs> <laughs> Paul and Andrew, your four are Hello, Hello, George the First, yes. Gummy Bears, and a stench of pig manure. There was a, a stench. <laughs> Came in from continental Europe. Came in from continental yeah. Europe. So George jo the First. George the First is obviously German. He's German, yeah. Because he's the British king. Yeah. So he's obviously German. Yeah. <laughs> Gummy bears are German. Gummy yeah. bears. There you go. Gummy bears. Yes, but there's two people saying two different things. <laughs> That's because one's from Hamburg and one's from Bavaria. I see. It's a, it's mm. Also, it's a very obvious expertise. It's called in German a gummy bearen. <laughs> <laughs> What's it in French? A gummy bearen. <laughs> Is that how it works? <laughs> because all of them spoke English in very silly German accents. What, the pigs? Spoke? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we do not want to be a pig, but what can we do? <laughs> <laughs> we are so good meat, ham, sausage, <laughs> bacon. <laughs> Why well, can I do a chicken with the egg, but no, it's always with the sausage. <laughs> Is that the right answer? Well, they all came to Britain from Germany, apart from the British sitcom Allo Allo, which was recently sold to Germany. Oh, was it? Yes, yes. And do you know why it's taken them all this time to buy it? Because uh, they thought it was reality TV. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's a documentary, The World at War. Allo Allo. <laughs> Well, they thought it might upset them. Yeah. A channel spokesman said, we don't think Allo Allo will offend German viewers, at least we hope not. Our aim is to make audiences laugh. Well, best of luck with that. <laughs> 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 Millions of Britons were forced to hold their noses last week as a horrible odour permeated the south of England. Yeah. The smell was traced to German pig farmers spreading <laughs> millions of litres of liquid manure across the land. Why might a spokesman for the Windsor Tourist Board be looking for a new job? The Guardian quoted him as saying, when I left home this morning, the smell was virtually unbearable. <laughs> I think the Queen is in. <laughs> Time now for the Missing Words round, which this week features as its guest publication, Be Improvement magazine. Inside, you'll find a free CD featuring Sting. <laughs> I think somebody needs to send somebody a copy of Joke Improvement magazine. <laughs> so this is only light entertainment, isn't it? It's mm. I know, but it's, you do it so well. Start the car. <laughs> <laughs> Do I hear Next wedding bells? Is... Do I hear wedding bells? MP Do euphoric... I hear wedding bells? No, you don't. <laughs> I thought I can hear them. <laughs> MP euphoric after cheeky girl what? Comes up with financial plan to compensate those hit hardest by the abolition of the 10p tax ban. <laughs> after he, she agrees to marry him. No, oh, she, she learns how to pronounce his name. <laughs> euphoric limpsip. <laughs> <laughs> um, Says well, yes. I've heard, well, they've already said it, but yes. Oh. Says yes. Oh, well done. Well, yeah, but they didn't say says yes, which you I don't did. Have to and be that's what literal. It said. It's just oh, I see. roughly on oh, the right. We're just paraphrasing lines. now, are we? Thank Fine. You. <laughs> no, you did say says yes. Yeah. There. Yeah. yeah, yeah I I did. Did. Yes. Said, did he? Andrew yeah. said it. Fuck yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Why don't you marry Andrew? <laughs> <laughs> I can't marry Andrew, he's going to marry Ian. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm married. Oh, well, Ian's married. Oh, well, just play a fast and loose with our host, and then all I'm married. I'm married. <laughs> Did you see Boris was questioned on one of those things? Someone said to him, have you ever had sex with a man? And he was trying to think how tactfully to answer it, and he said, not yet. <laughs> <laughs> That's the sort of mayor you want. <laughs> if you want that sort of mayor, obviously. <laughs> if you want another sort, you vote for one of the other candidates. Remember, mayors can go up or down. Down. <laughs> Particularly <laughs> Boris. Yes. <laughs> More up and down in exactly. his Limbit Opic burst into tears after his proposal to a cheeky girl was accepted as he suddenly realised he'd asked the wrong one. <laughs> <laughs> Next, Shepherd's Pie Row leads to what? Shepherd's deciding against having pie in the first place. <laughs> Death? Honey substitute. <clears throat> no. Oh, you had to think about it, though, didn't you? It's, I was still thinking about death. Oh, I see. Is it... yeah. It's not death, but it's something serious. Oldham. <laughs> You're not going to get it. No. That's pretty clear. Yeah. <laughs> Try as you might. Court case is the answer. Well, that wasn't That's a great not that serious, really. 
We were thinking of it going yeah, to be very serious. Yeah, you said it was serious. You said it was a bit like death, not just going to court. <laughs> <laughs> well, people haven't been to court as often as you have, Ian. For them, it's a, bit, it's, a, it's a more frightening thing. You're used to it. You're used to it. These are two brothers who, who got are? drunk, then argued oh, about whether a shepherd's pie should have tomatoes on the top or not. No. One threatened to hit the other over the head with a shovel, while the other threatened to destroy his brother's flat. The shepherd's pie court case has reminded many commentators of the old saying, red sky at night, you've been hit with a shovel. <laughs> <laughs> Next, when what try to remove the old queen in the early hours of the morning? When this recording's got on too long. <laughs> Requeening. Try removing me in the early hours of the morning and see what happens. <laughs> and finally, giant owl what? Uh, giant owl goes hoot! <laughs> hoot! <laughs> it's just the top of the trees here every night. Hoot! <laughs> That's a terrible job, mate, in hoots! <laughs> Giant Owl casts shadow over village. <laughs> this is a big owl. A village near Rotherham is yeah. being terrorised by a giant owl. The Daily Mail interviewed some locals. People are worried what it might do, said Matthew Bacon, who has two Siamese cats. <laughs> he had three last week, so there's your answer. <laughs> so the final scores are Ian and Ed have seven, Paul and Andrew have eight. <laughs> But before we go, there's just time for the caption competition. How old were you, Ian, when that was taken? <laughs> <laughs> that it does look like answer. I've just been replaced by a phone. <laughs> 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 that was series one, 1959. <laughs> Well, that was just the year after Elvis came. Yeah. <laughs> he was the first host. Oh, OK, what's the one That's one the one else. Oh, you can do it. And what about this? What about it? Oh. <laughs> Here's one I've eaten earlier. <laughs> <laughs> the Tory tax on food doesn't seem to be doing him any harm, does it? <laughs> you can still afford it. Tory tax on food makes me sick, said the president. <laughs> On which note, we say thank you to our panellists, Ian Hislop and Ed Byrne, Paul Merton and Andrew Neal, and I leave you with the news that after once again forgetting their wedding anniversary, Jeremy Clarkson accuses his wife of overreacting. <laughs> <laughs> British Airways has announced that the queues at Terminal 5 have finally reached a manageable level. And in Pennsylvania, Clinton supporters rejoice as Hillary finally succeeds in swallowing a snooker ball. <laughs> Good night. Scottish stand-up in the spotlight next, Johnny Vegas reveals why he's potty about the Edinburgh Fringe and Rona Cameron goes back to her girl-guiding days. The comedy map of Britain takes a tour of Scotland next here on BBC Two. Meets the Queen. I'm a big fan of yours. <laughs> Have your bottle, please, suede shores. <laughs> Sorry, man, I'm so sure it's a nice little bit. I was loading on the long way on. How very interesting. <laughs> Will you follow the Rocky Biddy style you were pioneered in the Sun Studio days, or do you think we'll go more rock and roll? Well, I'm so sure it's a nice little bit. So, well, I was like, it was burgers and was down the toilet, probably, man. I said, well. I've got one of those as well. <laughs>